G'day, Steel Nation Australia. G'day, Steel Nation Worldwide. And g'day, Steel Nation Universe. Welcome back to another video. And if it's your first time watching, thank you for checking out the channel. Hopefully, you do like the content. Hopefully, you like, like the content. And hopefully, you might even think about subbing to the content. Uh, I try and do videos, what, uh, two, three times a week now during the off-season. Uh, we're doing podcasts every Friday in America. Sorry, every Thursday in America, Friday in Australia. Um, doing this mailbag segment until I don't get any more questions. So you guys have been asking me questions on Facebook. You guys have been asking me questions on YouTube. And we'll try and do about five questions per episode. So if you like any of that stuff, you like me ranting about the steel, you like me you know, putting shit on the Bengals, uh, any of that stuff, you know, uh, feel free to hit the sub and let's, let's grow the community. Let's have a bit of fun. I'm trying to reach 500, 500,000. Far out, dude. 500. I, I really, my next goal is to reach 500 so that if I reach 500, I can end up writing the posts. So when I can write posts on YouTube, I can actually ask the question, the mailbag question on YouTube rather than Facebook. So people from YouTube land can, can put in their, their questions, their comments, and I can do polls. Um, that's the next step really in this journey of being a content curator and a YouTube, you know, universe curator. Um, I want to get 500, uh, yeah, subs. So when I can get that, I can put out the posts because I see I'm jealous, man. I'm so jealous. I see a lot of YouTubers put the post out and they write questions like, who do you think is going to do this? Yes or no? Or they give up four different options in, in the poll. I can't do that yet. I'm not able to. I'm not able to. So that sucks. Uh, it would help out my, my my content as well. I could easily just ask the question, the mailbag, thoughts about the Steelers this week. Boom. You know, I get back feedback. So get me to 500 and then we'll go from there. Let's try that out. But we're here to talk about the mailbag and my thoughts on these questions. Now, I did receive two questions from the YouTube land. And three three questions from Facebook, I think I did. So let's uh, let's check it out. Okay, so my first question was from Travis uh, from YouTube. He says, an out of nowhere but genuinely curious question, is being Rick Rolled a thing in Australia or is that mostly an American thing? Uh, I think Rick Rolled, man, is, you know, by the way, it's a crazy outlandish question. You were exactly right. Um, being Rick Rolled is a, is a worldwide thing, in my opinion. Um, that's the classic. You know what? Even I think even like Rick Rolled now. Do people do people still do that? I'm not even sure if people still do Rick Rick Rolled. To be honest, there was there was one instance with um, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers two years ago in 2019. The Los Angeles Chargers tried to Rick Roll us, and they started to play Renegade. Once they started playing Renegade, uh, about 15 20 seconds in. The, the stadium, you know, turned it into never going to give you up, never going to let you down, round it. You know, they played that, right? And it got all the Steel fans fired up. It got them also fired up because once you begin to play Renegade, there is no going back, mate. I've heard Renegade twice and there is no going back. Once you start Renegade, I don't care if you Rick roll me, if you turn it off in the middle, if you only play a snippet of it, there is no going back, and that team cannot withstand the pain that is about to come, okay? So it was quite funny that LA tried to do that to the Steelers. It didn't work out. We ended up winning the game. Uh, I think that was with Bell. It might have been, was it Bell last year? I'm pretty sure from memory. Was Bell there in 2019? Let me know in the comments below if Bell was there in 2019. Like, I think he won us the game near the end, right? I'm pretty sure he did. Or I could be making it up. It was Duck Hodges who won the game, but I think I think Bell won that game in the last minute. Or I could be thinking of a different game. Anyways, that's our first question. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so we have uh, Patricia here from Mexico and from YouTube land as well. She says, "Hey Mark, great idea this mailbag Q and A. Thank you, I appreciate that. Let's just see how it rolls on. I want to try and get at least five questions per week and submit this video so." You so in America, uh, or that direction, everyone sees this video on a sun Sunday? Yes, on a Sunday. I'm pretty sure I'm going to try and do it every single week. Now, Pat, 
Uh, Pat's question is: For so many years, Big Ben was a leader on on you know Big Ben was a leader on the offense. Now that he's gone, who do you think will step up and take that role, both on the field and in the locker room? Okay, let me start with we'll start with the defense first. I think on defense, I think TJ will be will start to become the leader of that locker room. I would like to see Devin Bush get more involved as well on the defense, and I think it's going to be. Uh, a myriad of, of, of a few people. Uh, TJ, Cam Haywood, and Bush, and uh, Minka Fitzpatrick. I think those four guys will start to you know, create a brotherhood in this team on this defense with the young fellas like Alex Highsmith, Highsmith stepping up and bringing back an old veteran like Alualu and maybe hopefully Stefan Tua comes back too. I think if, if Stefan Tua comes back, this front seven is going to be very scary. And I would like to see TJ step on the field. He's already stepped it up. TJ won't stop. And I hopefully in the locker room, TJ, Bush, and Minka on defense will start to create that Steel City knock them around mentality. I can't wait. I just can't wait to see that. Now, on the offense, <clears throat> if Big Ben's gone, that's a good question. Who's going to be there if Big Ben's gone? Whoa. <laughs> um, why are you throwing me the hard questions? Honestly. Um, you know what? I, I, I don't know. I really don't know who's going to step up in the impact of Big Ben. It's going to be a collective effort of the own line and a, and, and a collective effort of the run game. Maybe Muth, must, Muth will step up. Depending if Juju's there too, maybe he will step up. I just, I'm not too sure yet, Pat. I'm not too sure. And that, that's maybe a scary thing as well. Big Ben was the leader. Big Ben was the, you know, the go-to guy to get everything done for many years. Now we don't know the direction of, of the offense. So hopefully that answers your question, but it probably didn't. It, it really didn't answer your question at all. Okay. And our third question now from Robert Richards. Uh, sorry, Robert Richards from uh, Facebook land says, when will we get rid of the other running back or running backs, really? Najee is the only decent one we have. Look, I agree with you. Najee is, is a fantastic running back and we kind of need, we don't have a one-two punch. We do not have a one-two punch and I don't understand why. Apparently, Benny Snell football the last few years was meant to be that, you know, um, punch it down, down their guts, run it down their throat, get the five yards, get the six yards, go and get a touchdown. But it hasn't happened. It has not happened. Our second running back has not been there for the last, you know, few years. We used to try and use uh, Jalen Samuels when Connor was there. Yeah, he went okay, right? Nothing is really, you know, uh, eventuated out of this stuff, right? We've had Benny still football. We tried We tried Kalen Ballard this year. He might be on the cut this year as well. Um, Anthony McFarlane. I think we drafted him in the in the uh, in the third year. I think he was two two years ago. We drafted him in, in the third, or it might have been last year. I can't remember. But we had McFarlane there. He's been injured pretty much the whole time. Uh, you haven't seen him do anything. So right now, Naji is the guy leading the carries at eighty percent, eighty five percent. But he he needs a break, right? We can't run Naji off his feet because otherwise we're, we're going to waste a great player and we're going to overuse a good running back like Naji. All right, on to the fourth uh, fourth question, and it's from Facebook and our mate Edwin. He says, who do you think – sorry, my bad. What do you think the Steelers' record will be next year in 2022, and do they make the playoffs? Oh, what are we? So we're 17 games in the season. I reckon – okay, look, all right. I'm gonna put, I, I think we might go 10, 10 and 7, okay? I think we go 10 and 7. Reason being – if it's if it's if it's Rudolph, if it's Haskins, if it's a whoever, whatever quarterback comes in, I think our running game will get better with the O line, and I think our defense deserves to to be have a shot at the playoffs. So I think we probably miss the division. Maybe the Bengals might win the division again. Even the Ravens could win the division. Um, the Steelers have an easier schedule. Like the Steelers are versing this year at home, the Raiders, the Patriots, the Saints, the Jets, the Bucks. Right, those last three: the Saints, the Jets, the Bucks. Who, who's their who's their quarterback, right? Is it Zach Wilson's the one for the Jets? Nobody knows who the, the Bucks QB is going to be, and uh, the Saints quarterback. 
Um, he's that bloke, the Swiss Army knife guy. The is it, uh, let me look this up. So who the who the who the Blues Wazoo is? Uh, Saint QB is it? It's Austin, right? Uh, no, it's oh Taysom Hill. Yeah. So they have Jameis Winston there, but I think he's getting shipped out. Uh, Taysom Hill's the Saints. I think we can beat the Saints really at home. So I think we can maybe go, yeah, 10 and 7. Um, even, uh, even our away schedule is versing the Falcons. I think we can beat them. Uh, then we're versing the Bills. They probably are lost there. Carolina Panthers, they're on the downtrend too. Um, we can probably beat them. Colts, we're versing them away. They get, they're, they're moving on with Wentz. Wentz could even maybe come here. Even though I, don't, I, don't, I don't want Wentz, but Wentz could come here. Uh, we might lose to to Wentz. The Dolphins will be a great matchup too with now having Brian Flores, the, the ex-head coach. That'd be fantastic to get a win there. And the Eagles too, we can lose against the Eagles. So I think roughly maybe about 10 and 7. And I think we can make I think we can make the wild card uh playoffs. Now, anything better than 10 and 7 would be fantastic, you know. But in, in saying that too, we could also go 7 and 10 depending how the QB player goes and depending how, if we can move this football. If we can't move the football, we can't do anything. If we rush the football the same way we did last year in 2021, there's no chance we're going to the playoffs. Um, there's absolutely no chance. We need to be better than 32nd. We need to be better than 30. We have to be a middle of the pack running game and we have to be more physical on the O-line. And I would say at this point, Edwin Man, I would say 10 and 7 and wild card. Just, just for laughs, wild card. Okay, and our last question for the mailbag segment this week comes from my mate, Glenn Bright, from uh, Facebook land. He says, now, mate, Glenn, if you are watching this, I don't know if you, if you just write the questions or if you do take time to watch it. I thank you if you do watch it. But why the fuck did you ask me this question? This question is so difficult to answer. So Glenn says, how do our coaches stack up? Question mark. Seems to be a lot of experience among them when you look at the roster. So are our problems with the coaches or are the problems with our cattle on the field? Now, he's had a little bit of an Australiaism there, but, mate, so you're saying to me right now, you're saying pretty much, is it the coach's fault, the coaches in general, that we're losing? Or is it the play of the Pittsburgh Steelers players the reason we're losing or the reason we can't win playoff games. This is honestly probably one of the, like, this is the hardest question that I think I've, I've seen in a long time because you, you can look at it multiple ways, right? The coaches go out there, <coughs> they design, they design the schematic, they design the play, the offensive play, defensive play, special team play, uh, design these, these schemes and playbooks to win the game, right? You play to win the game, right? Now, if the players don't live up to that and they can't excel on these certain schemes, philosophies, plays, then you're going to lose, right? That's that's notion one. However, if the schematics, if the schemes on offense or defense and their, and their coaching is not good, then... No matter what, how good the players are, if the players are fantastic, right, but they're being limited from, from bad coaching, bad coaching calls, bad time management, um, yeah, certain plays on 3rd and 13, you're throwing the screen to Naji, Matt Canada, right? As good as Naji is, a bad play call, what are you meant to do, right? What are you meant to do as a player? Okay, so this is why this is this is the reason why we love football and the reason why we love the game, because you do need a good coaching staff. However, you need a good set of players too. So if the coaching staff is four four stars out of five, but your players are one star out of five, you can only do what's what what is li what is limited to the player. All right, without Juju this year. The Steelers' offense changed. Um, on the defensive side, there was no Vince Williams. He decided to retire. And Aloualu uh, ended up getting hurt. And Stefan Tuitt 
couldn't play because he was hurt and because of the death of his brother and other other numerous things. So without these players, how would the coaching staff, what, what can they do, right? Now, some would say this year was the hardest, was the hardest schedule and Coach Tomlin did his best to get 9-7-1 and one, and that was a success to go to the playoffs. However, at the same time, once you get to the playoffs, you, you know, you're eating dirt. You're doing nothing. We lose 42-24. Big Ben can't do anything. So, to answer your question, I like our coaching staff this year. I really do. Bringing in uh, Flores for the linebacker coach, who's an ex-head coach, and promoting Terrell Austin, uh, Terrell Austin to, to start to do something with the team. Uh, Mike Tomlin is a winner. No matter what anyone says, he's a, he's still a winner. But we need some of these players to to buy in. I think we need some of these players to buy in because no matter how good a coaching you had, you have with the schemes, with the certain play calls you design, you need the players to run them. So it's really the yin and yang. It's the ebb and flow. Um, you know. People are starting to, to rat out Mason Rudolph, right? Because he's a bad quarterback. For that, for some games in 20, uh, was it 2020? No, 2019. And also for his play versus the Lions. Oh, you couldn't beat the Lions. However, coaching wise, the, the coaches put him in the best, best position to win, right? Then DJ and Frymuth fumbled the football. So, it's the it's the age old question, isn't it? You know, chicken or the egg kind of kind of like narrative. Is it the coaching that is poor and that's why we are losing, um, and we can't win that we can't win that playoff game, or is it the, is it the skill talent and the players the reason why we can't win it? Glenn, man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You've really got me stumped. Um, I honestly can't. I, I really, I really. That's a hard question to answer. I like I like Coach Tomlin. I think we need a better O-line, and I think we need a better running game. That's what, that's what I would say about that. All right, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed the uh, mailbag segment from Steel Nation Australia. Uh, I got to say, that last question, uh, I, just, I just answered then, number five. Dude, that's pretty hard, man. Coaching or players, I don't know. I really don't know. I just hope this team can start to play some good football. And we can start to win playoff games again and go on to win another Super Bowl and be the be the, the first team to win seven. All right. It's a whole new idea with no Big Ben. Uh, bringing in a new quarterback or that might happen in the draft or even bringing in Mason Rudolph or starting him and or Haskins, that might happen. We don't know right now. As I'll talk about in the upcoming uh, podcast on Friday, from my Friday, your American Thursday, uh, in a few days' time, hopefully my guest John can join me. It's the title is called "It's Quiet a Little Too Quiet." It's very quiet right now. A lot of speculation about, you know, the NFL. What what are we gonna do? Who are we gonna get? Who's gonna be here? You know, blah 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 blah. There's there's a lot going on, right? It's a very funny time because we're getting into the combine next, and then free agency, and then draft. Um, yeah, there's some, there is some, it's just, it's just weird. It's so weird with that football. Uh, all I want to do is talk football forever and it's, um, yeah, it's very strange. So, but hopefully you guys enjoyed, uh, the mailbag segment, please leave, um, comments in the YouTube description or not, no, no, in the YouTube comments, leave questions. I want questions for next week. Um, I will take about five. I'll do about five questions. And that will be the ongoing theme every single week. If I can't get many in YouTube, I'll try and ask my Still and Nation Australia group and Facebook page. They have some really good questions like Glenn did before. Um, yeah, if you guys enjoy the content or if you want to see more videos, hit that like, hit the share, hit the share button, share me around all around the world. Um, and sub too. I, I really, look, I don't, I don't normally ask for subs, but I'm at the point where I do want to get to 500 because I want to write those posts. And then once I get to 500, the next goal is to be 1K and, and try and, try and uh, you know, make something out of this as best as, as best I can. I'm starting to research into some more ideas too, um, as I'm talking about more about the Steelers and stuff like that. 
but I want to get to 500 so that I can write posts on YouTube. That would be just the next milestone would be the funnest thing. All right. So yeah, thanks for checking out Steel Nation Australia in the mailbag segment. Uh, I need to come up with a cool name too. I haven't got a cool name. Mailbag, uh, man. I need a cool name. I need a cool name for the mailbag segment. I haven't got any idea what to call it yet. So right now, it's Steel Nation Australia, mailbag 1.2. I don't know. I don't know. All right, as always, uh, here we go, Steelers. Here we go. Here we go.